It's been, I think, two years since we last talked, and then in that time, you somehow went and co-created a new programming language called Mojo. Uh, so it's optimized for AI, it's a superset of Python. Let's look at the big picture. What is the vision uh, for Mojo? For Mojo, well, so I mean, I think you have to zoom out. So I've been working on a lot of related technologies for many, many years. So I've worked on LLVM and a lot of things and mobile and servers and things like this. But the world's changing. And what's happened with AI is we have new GPUs and new machine learning accelerators and other ASICs and things like that that make AI go real fast. At Google, I worked on TPUs. That's one of the biggest, largest scale deployed systems that exist for AI. Mm -hmm. And really what you see is if you look across all of the things that are happening in the industry, there's this new compute platform coming. And it's not just about CPUs or GPUs or TPUs or NPUs or IPUs or whatever, all the PUs, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It's about how do we program these things, right? And so for software folks like us, right, it doesn't do us any good if there's this amazing hardware that we can't use. And one of the things you find out really quick is that having the theoretical capability of programming something and then having the world's power and the innovation of all the, all the smart people in the world get unleashed on something can be quite different. And so really where Mojo came from was starting from a problem of we need to be able to take machine learning, take the infrastructure underneath it and make it way more accessible, way more usable, way more understandable by normal people and researchers and other folks that are not themselves like experts in GPUs and things like this. And then through that journey, we realized, hey, we need syntax for this. We need to do a programming language. So one, one of the, the main features of the language I uh, say so fully in jest, is that uh, it allows you to have the file extension to be uh, an emoji or the fire emoji, which is one of the first emojis used as a file extension I've ever seen in my life. And then you ask yourself the question, why in the 21st century are we not using Unicode for file extensions? It's, I mean, it's an epic decision. I think clearly the most important decision you made the most, but, but you could also just use M-O-J-O as the file extension. Well, so, okay, so take a step back. I mean, come on, Lex, do you think that the world's ready for this? This is a big moment in the world, right? This is, we're releasing this onto the world. This is innovation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really is kind of brilliant. Emojis are such a big part of our daily lives. Why is it not in programming? Well, and and like you take a step back and look look at what file extensions are, right? They're basically metadata, right? And so why are we spending all the screen space on them and all this stuff? Also, you know, you have them stacked up next to text files and PDF files and whatever else. Like, if you're going to do something cool, you want it to stand out, right? And emojis are colorful. They're visual. They're they're beautiful, yeah. right? What's been the response so far from... Uh, is, is there support on, like, Windows on operating system yeah. in displaying, like, File Explorer? Yeah, yeah. Can the, they... the one problem I've seen is that Git doesn't escape it right. Uh -huh. And so it thinks that the fire emoji is unprintable, and so it like prints out weird hex things if you use the command line Git tool. But uh, everything else, as far as I'm aware, works fine. And I, I have faith that Git can be improved. So I'm and not, so I'm not GitHub is fine. GitHub is fine. Yeah, GitHub is fine. Visual Studio Code, Windows, like all this stuff, totally ready. Because people have internationalization yeah. in their normal part of their paths. So this is just like taking the next step, right? <laughs> Somewhere between, oh, wow, that makes sense. Cool. I like new things to, oh my God, you're killing my baby. Like, what are you talking about? This can never be like, I can never handle this. How am I going to type this? <laughs> like all these things. And so this is something where uh, I think that the world will get there. We don't have to bet the whole farm on this. I think we can provide both paths, mm -hmm. but I think it'll be great. Uh, when can we have emojis as part of the code? I wonder. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, lots of languages provide that. So um, I think that we have partial support for that. It's probably not fully done yet, but but yeah, you can you can do that. For example, in Swift, you can do that for sure. So an example we give gave at Apple was yeah. the do the dog cow. Yeah. So that's a classical Mac heritage thing, and so you use the dog and the cow emoji together, and that could be your variable name. But of course, the internet went and made pile of poop for everything. Yeah. So you know, if you want to name your function pile of poop, then you can totally go to town and see how that gets through code review. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, let me just ask a bunch of random questions. Uh, so is Mojo primarily designed for AIs or is it a general purpose programming language? Yeah, good question. So it's AI first. And so AI is driving a lot of the requirements. And so um, Modular is building and designing and driving Mojo forward. And it's not because it's an interesting project theoretically to build. It's because we need it. 
And so at Modular, we're really tackling the AI infrastructure landscape and the big problems in AI, and the reasons that it is so difficult to use and scale and adopt and deploy and like all these big problems in AI. And so we're coming at it from that perspective. Now, when you do that, when you start tackling these problems, you realize that the um, solution to these problems isn't actually an AI-specific solution. And so while we're doing this, we're building Mojo to be a fully general programming language. And that means that you can uh, obviously tackle GPUs and CPUs and like these AI things, but it's also a really great way to build NumPy and other things like that. Or, you know, just if you look at what many Python libraries are today, often they're a layer of Python for the API and they end up being C and C++ code underneath them. That's very true in AI. That's true in lots of other domains as well. And so anytime you see this pattern, that's an opportunity for Mojo to help simplify the world and help people have one thing. Mm -hmm. So optimize through simplification by having one thing. So you mentioned modular. Mojo is the programming language. Modular is the whole software stack. So just over a year ago, we started this company called Modular. Yeah. Okay, what Modular is about is it's about taking AI and up-leveling it into the next generation, right? And so... If you take a step back, what's gone on in the last five, six, seven, eight years is that we've had things like TensorFlow and PyTorch and these other systems come in. You've used them, you know this. And what's happened is these things have grown like crazy and they get tons of users. It's in production deployment scenarios. It's being used to power so many systems. I mean, AI is all around us now. Now It used to be controversial years ago, but now it's a, it's a thing. Um, but the challenge with these systems is that they haven't always been... Um, thought out with current demands in mind. Mm -hmm. And so you think about it, when where were LLMs eight years ago? <laughs> well, they didn't exist, right? AI has changed so much. And a lot of what people are doing today are very different than when these systems were built. And meanwhile, the hardware side of this has gotten into a huge mess. And there's tons of new chips and accelerators and every, every big company is announcing a new chip every day, it feels like. And so between that, you have like this moving system on one side, a moving system on the other side, and it just turns into this gigantic mess, which makes it very difficult for people to actually use AI, particularly in production deployment scenarios. Mm -hmm. And so what Modular's doing is we're helping build out that software stack to help solve some of those problems, so that then people can be more productive and get more AI research into production. Now, what Mojo does is it's a really, really, really important piece of that. And so that is you know, part of that engine and part of the technology that allows us to solve these problems. So Mojo is a programming language that allows you to do the higher level programming, the low level programming, like do all kinds of programming in that spectrum that gets you closer and closer to the hardware. So take a step back. So Lex, what do you love about Python? Oh boy, where do I begin? Um, what is love? What do I love about Python? You're, you're a guy who knows love, I know this. Yes, um, how intuitive it is how it feels like I'm writing natural language, English. Yeah. Uh, how when I can not just write, but read other people's code, somehow I can understand it faster. It's more uh, condensed than other languages, like ones I'm really familiar with, like C++ mm -hmm. and C. Uh, there's a bunch of sexy little features. Yeah, uh, We'll probably talk about some of them, but list comprehensions and stuff like this. Uh, so, and, and don't forget the, the entire ecosystem of all the packages. Oh, yeah, that's right? probably huge. Because there's always something. If you want to do anything, there's always a package. Yeah, so it's not just uh, the ecosystem of the packages and the ecosystem of the humans that do it. That, that That's a really, that's an interesting dynamic. That's because huge. Because I yeah. think something uh, about the, the usability and the ecosystem makes the thing viral and it grows and then it's a virtuous cycle, I think. Well, and there, there's many things that went into that. Like, so I think that ML was very good for Python. And so I think that TensorFlow and PyTorch and these systems embracing Python really took and helped Python grow. But I think that the major thing underlying it is that Python's like the universal connector, mm -hmm. right? It really helps bring together lots of different systems so you can compose them and build out larger systems without having to understand how it works. But then what is the problem with Python? <laughs> well, I guess you could say several things, but probably that it's slow. I think that's usually what people complain about, right? And so slow, I mean, other people would complain about tabs and spaces versus curly braces or whatever, but I mean, th those people are just wrong because yeah. it is actually just better to use indentation. 
Wow, strong <laughs> words. So actually, I just, on a small tangent, let's actually take that. Let's take all kinds of tangents. <laughs> oh, come on, Lex, you can push me on it. I can take design, it. Design, listen, I've recently left Emacs for VS Code and okay. the kind of hate mail I had to receive. Because on the way to doing that, I also said I've considered Vim. Yep. And uh, chose not to and went with VS Code. And You're just... touching on deep religions, right? <laughs>